What's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are going to talk about why we don't pay for guests. <laughs> uh, it's a, a more complex reason than you might think that is not because we don't have money. That is part of the reason, but it's also not at all part of the reason. No, we're, so stick we're around. Gonna we're going to talk about we're why. Gonna all, we're going to make all the, the hundreds of thousands of dollars that we make from this podcast. We just want to keep it for ourselves. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's why you have a hat that says sport. You have the most generic hat possible. Go sports ball. Why we're wearing essentially the same shirt. <laughs> yeah. If you are new to the show, thank you for joining us. If you're returning, double thank you. We appreciate you watching or listening. It's nice knowing that there's a strong audience out there that looks forward to our content, to our two episodes each and every week. And if you want to go deeper on these episodes, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. It's the show's online home. It gives you all kinds of great stuff, links to where you can find the show, uh, behind the scenes information. If you want to submit a guest or a topic suggestion, there's a form there to do that as well. Whistlekick.com is the place to go to see everything that we do in our mission, our mission to connect, educate, and entertain, our goal of bringing everyone in the world to train for just six months, and all the things that we are doing along those lines, from our events to our training programs to our products like apparel or equipment, all kinds of good stuff like that. And if you use the code PODCAST15, it's going to save you 15% in the store, and we appreciate those who do. Other things you might do to help us out? Well, you could join the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. Starts at $2 a month. That's how you find out what's coming up on the show. And at higher tiers, we give you more and more and more. Lots of value there. I was recording some Patreon exclusive content earlier today. You could also do the free, simple, easy thing that everyone appreciates. Tell people about cool stuff. If you love this show, if you find yourself tuning in routinely, it fits into your life in some way. Don't you wish you'd found out about it sooner? Why would you deprive the people that think similarly to you from finding this show? Like truly, like I don't understand why people don't do this. If you find something cool, tell people about it. it makes Absolutely. everybody's life better. Okay. So why we don't pay for guests. Now, this is a subject that comes up once in a while for a few different reasons. There are times where we reach out to a potential guest and they say, how much money are you going to give me? And Andrew, you're going to tell a, a more specific example without naming names because the person's actually been on the show. Uh, and then the other half of it for me is what it's kind of the opposite flow of money. It's when I listen to a podcast and I can tell that the guest has paid to be on. We don't do either. We have had people try to pay us. Mm -hmm. We have had people try to pay us directly or with, Hey, uh, I'll give you a cut of this thing that I'm selling that I'm going to push on your show, yep. uh, things like that. And in every single case, we have said no. In fact, the offer for people to pay us happens more than people wanting us to pay them. That's true. Probably I mean, yep. two or three I mean, to one. Yep. Yep. And the reason we don't do either direction is for the exact same reason. It changes the ethics of the show. Yep. I was going to say one word, ethics. Now, when you came on, and I'd like you to speak to this, Andrew, when you came on and you started working with the show, you, you got the behind the scenes, right? Like right away, it was the curtains peeled back and you got to see the process. And our process is fairly organic. And, and, and I hope you don't mind speaking to it because you, I mean, you've taken it and run with it and improved it far more than when I was doing that role. And help the audience understand where the int where, where our kind of uh, collective integrity, I guess, fits into that process. So, yeah. So when I came on board, um, first off, my life was a lot easier then because I didn't have to do all this on-camera stuff. I was just a producer. I just was behind the scenes. It was great. Not that it's not great now. But, stick around. Um, I'll give you more and more. Heads up to anybody out there. If you stick around long enough, I'm giving you a job. <laughs> just what happens. So, um you know, the process back then and, and, and still to this day, you know, is we reach out to a guest or whether it's someone that I 
wanted to have on the show, or someone you wanted to have on the show, or whether they were a guest suggestion. And often, uh, you know, a, a listener will suggest a guest to come on the show, but that guest knows nothing about our show. Sure. Um, sometimes they do. Sometimes the the listener has talked to the, Hey, would you, you know, I listen to this podcast. Can I connect you to them? And, you know, would you go on? And sometimes, you know, it's really easy for me when I contact them, but sometimes more often than not, the person that I'm contacting to come on the show has not heard of us. Um, or which blows they, my mind. I know me too. Cause and we've been doing this for us, so long. Yeah. And if they have heard of us, they haven't necessarily listened and you know, they're busy. They've got all the stuff going on. I get that. That's fine. But what I then have to do is say, you know, who we are, what we are about. And, you know, this is kind of our mission statement. And are you interested in coming on the show? Um, mm. And 99 times out of a hundred, the answer is absolutely. But occasionally uh, I will get someone who will be like, well, I'm not sure. Um, maybe not 99% of the time, 98% of the time they say no problem. 1% of the time they're like, I don't think I'm good enough. You know, I look at the people you've had on your show and I don't think I, I should be on your show. Uh, we usually tell those people uh, we disagree and we want you to come on the show anyway. Uh, it's it's and, our, it's our show. We know better than you do. Just come on yeah. the show. Darn it. Yeah, basically my, my favorite uh, was uh, a person who told me, uh, that they don't think that they should come on the show, that they don't have any stories to tell. And I said, how long have you been training martial arts? And they were like, 35 years. I was like, okay, uh, I, I win this argument. But the other 1% will often say like, well, what is your show really about? How big is it? Um, and then, so I'll say three quarters of a percent say that. And then one quarter of a percent, occasionally someone will say, uh, you know, is there a speaking fee? You know, how much is the speaking fee will I get for being on your show? Um, and the first time it happened to me was someone that I reached out to, is someone that I uh, follow um, and said, you know, oh, you know, that, that, that'd be really cool to have this person on. And so I reached out to them and they're like, mm. uh, you know, d what is the speaking fee? And it had never happened to me before. And, and I actually reached out to you and it's like, mm. I'm, not sure what to what to say to this um they and they also asked what our listener like what our download numbers were <laughs> they wanted to know basically essentially they're asking me and what we, we had a discussion about it and you know your answer is well essentially what he really wants to know is how big is your show and are there going to be 10 people listening to it because is it worth my time uh, and, you know, after you and I going back and forth on how to handle it, I just responded and said, uh, in terms of the, the finances, you know, we, we, we don't actually pay for any guest. Um, if this is a, 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 a deal breaker for you, that's, a, you know, I'm really sorry to hear that, but we just don't, it's not something that we do. Yeah. Um, and here's why, um, and which we will continue. We'll talk about more in the episode right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I encourage you to check out our show. Um, you know, here are some of the guests we've had on the show. And when this particular person looked at the guests we'd had on and how many hundreds of episodes we'd had at that point, and when they realized, oh, all of these guests have been on the show and none of them got paid. Oh, okay. And they changed their tune. They come on the show. That's usually what happens. They were great. It was a great episode. Yep. It was a wonderful episode. Um, and it just took that knowing that, you know, this isn't what we do. Um, and the same thing with download numbers, which, you know, I'll let you speak to a little bit more about, about that, but uh, it does occasionally happen. And there have been guests who have said, okay, thank you. I'm, I'm not able to come on. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Right. You know, I, I think part of this is, you know, I, I don't know how much the audience knows about the podcast industry. You know, we, 20% of the population doesn't even listen to podcasts at this point. We're, we're at somewhere around eight to 10% consistently listen. It's a, it's still a, a, a small minority yeah. with maybe about 20% have listened at some point. Those are kind of my inference based on the, the, the latest numbers that I saw a couple of years ago and where things were headed. Right. Yeah. 
so what what that means is that there are still a lot of very small podcasts you know and it doesn't take long if you look around at the martial arts podcasts out there you will see that there are a lot of very very small podcasts a lot of them that did not get past five or ten episodes the average podcast does not make it to ten episodes in fact it's it's some massive majority don't make it to 10 episodes. So if you get somebody that starts a podcast and they set up their first five or 10 people they want to talk to, and they reach out to big names, if, if you're a big name, how often do you have people reaching out to you saying, well, will you come on the show? Will you come on the show? Will you come on the show? And you've got to draw the line somewhere. And if you're used to saying, how big is your show? Oh, I just started. How big is your show? Oh, I just started. How big is your show? We're on episode three, right? Most of the bigger names are going to want to wait a little bit because to put in the time, knowing that four people will listen, not really a, a, the best use of your time. Now, I'll go on anybody's show. <laughs> Me too. Because I remember what it was like at the beginning. Mm hmm when I was scrambling to get people on the show. And so it's just kind of my way of paying it back forward, however you want to look at it. I have never turned down an invite to go on a podcast. And, and, I, and I, I'm putting that out publicly to the audience. If anybody out there has a show, even if it directly competes with ours, I'll still come on your show you because I want to help. You've been on multiple other martial art podcasts. Absolutely. Yes. And, and I'll, I'll I'd go on them again because I, I've been very honest. If somebody finds a show that they like better, that actually serves our mission to connect, educate, and entertain and get people trained. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the show, it's about the mission. So if I can help, fine, let's do it. Okay, now the, the, the other thing, the download numbers, uh, this has become relevant again lately as we are working on the sponsorship side as we, you know, we just closed up our second sponsorship run with the episode that we recorded just a little bit ago, mm -hmm. audience it was it's last, last week. Episode. Right, the safest family on the block stuff. Jason was the second sponsor. Kataro was the first. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff we're working out. The currency of a podcaster is that that back end information, including who's downloading from where, what those numbers look like, etc. And we reserve that for sponsors. It's the only group that we're going to share that with. And we try to convey what we do a little bit differently to guests because if they don't understand podcasting and specifically martial arts podcasting because we're a niche of a niche we're the biggest fish in a really weirdly shaped pond yeah and if you don't understand that then it can look strange so i think i i think i answered Things yeah. you passed the ball over to before. Okay. Yeah. Essentially, we don't we don't divulge uh, our download numbers publicly, okay. um, and we don't pay our guests because you know, ethics. You know, I mean, one of the perfect yep. examples that we have talked about many times, uh, semi related, is free training day. Yep. That you know we don't pay people to come and present at free training day. Because it changes things. Money, absolute, And I don't think there's a listener out there that will disagree. When you introduce money into an, uh, an equation, it changes things. Absolutely, unequivocally, yep. it does. Yep. One of the things that we talk about with free training day, and it's kind of ironic that we're both wearing free training day shirts from last year. And, and audience, if you're, whether or not you're watching or listening, uh, Andrew's wearing the, is that, that's the, Northeast. That's the Northeast one, and I've, I've got the Pacific Northwest one. Andrew's got Mount Monadnock on his shirt. I have Mount Hood. And when we talk about free training day, our job is really simple. And the other free training day uh, directors, their jobs are really simple because the wrong people don't want to teach for free. Correct. Only the people who get it will teach for free. Yeah. Yeah. And if people look at it and they're like, oh, it's free for me to go, it must be terrible. Well, then you know what? We don't want you. And that's fine. Yeah. But the people who show up, the people who get it, have an amazing time. And that ethic grew out of martial arts radio. And now what we say that the best stuff that Whistlekick does is free. 
it's free for you to listen to this podcast or watch this podcast. Mm -hmm. It's free for you to come to free training day. Yeah. We do all kinds of stuff for free and we will continue to do so because that is, you know, that is in our ethical code. And for us to do that and then to turn around and pay someone simply to give up their time when we give significant amounts of time to the martial arts community, it doesn't line up. Yeah. And if that if that is a hard and fast rule for someone, they're going to need to be paid to come on the show, then two things are going on. They don't see the value in coming on, which is fine. They don't have to. And two, they're not our people. Yeah. If you Absolutely. take a look at the huge names that have been on the show, people who are paid significant amounts of money to appear for teaching seminars or television or movies, not one of them has been paid a nickel. No, no. The, the, only and and I I know that you have said you've had people offer to pay you to come on the show, um, and mm -hmm. you know we don't accept that stuff. The only quote kickback that we would occasionally get is unprompted. Someone will send us a book. Sometimes people send a book. Yep, right. uh, I've never asked for one. No. Uh, it has never been conditional on someone's appearance. Uh, a good number of those books went into the VIP bundle bags for free training day Northeast last year. Yep. Yep. And the only ones that didn't were ones that were personally signed to me because who wants a book with somebody else's name in it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe if I get really famous, they'll want those books, but you know, I'm not there. <laughs> so to me, it's just, it's really clear why we handle it this way. And I don't see us changing that. No. And that's not to say that it's, uh, inappropriate for others to do it. You know, everybody's got to do what makes sense for them. There are plenty of podcasts out there that pay their guests. Yeah. There are plenty of podcasts out there that the guests pay to be on. In fact, there's a podcast I can think of right now that uh, they've made a significant amount of money. They built a huge audience and then they flipped the switch. And if you wanted to get in front of, I think, what did I say? It was like 1.5 million people that they got up to. If you wanted to get in front of those people, you paid a certain amount. Yeah. Okay, great. You know, if that works for you, that's fine. Uh, and, and then the other side, there's a podcast I can think of. Neither of these are in the martial arts space, by the way, that I could tell the moment that they went, I refer to as pay to play. The yeah. moment that their guests started paying to be on, I was like, I can see it. Mm -hmm. Because all of a sudden the teeth came, the teeth went away. The yeah. teeth went behind the lips. It was just, there was no, there was no substance to the show. It was very fluffy. and. Uh, fortunately that show does two different formats and I don't listen to those guest interviews anymore. They're a waste of my time. Mm, yeah. Cause I don't trust yeah. the information. The minute, the minute you accept money, you become beholden to yeah. someone else. Yeah. Um, if you, if you've been a fan of this show for a while, you know, that sometimes episodes come out where, you know, we, we bobble a little bit, right? Like maybe something's a little bit off in the editing. There's a pause that could have been handled better or. Uh, you know, the video quality dips a little bit, right? We do our best to constantly improve those processes. And actually we're recording with a, a newer tool now because we're trying to improve from Zoom. But if somebody was paying, what's the standard? Well, I don't like the quality of that. That, that came out bad. I insist we do it again. Yeah. And now we're, now we're doing it again. And we're hoping that their internet doesn't drop out again because it's almost always their internet. <laughs> I have two connections at home. Uh, you know, this way we get to run our show our way and we get to be as authentic as possible when we bring it to you. Yep, absolutely. Anything we've missed? No, I think that pretty much covers why we don't pay for guests. Okay. So if, if there are, if there are bits we've missed, and you want us to go deeper, if you want to reach out, if you want to ask questions, if there are adjacent topics that you are curious about, you know, we, we will, you can always ask the question. If it gets a little too inside baseball, if it's too private of information for the company, because remember, this is a company that is attempting to become profitable. I, I reserve the right to not answer the question, but I will at least acknowledge your question. You and I'll try to provide some, some information. Yeah, because as you said in the example, the, the potential guest, it's not the actual number that they care about. It's they're trying to make sure that there's substance there. Yeah. And I will answer questions in that way as long as they're asked. 
respectfully. Thank you for coming by. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Andrew, thank you for your time and all that you do for the show. Patreon contributors, unlike a lot of shows, we don't name you and put you up on the screen. If anybody wants that, I don't think people want that, but you know, we could do that, but I am still very appreciative. And those of you who do contribute to the Patreon, tell other people to contribute to the Patreon. There, it, it grows and it, it offsets a significant amount of the expense on this show. Not all of it, but a significant amount. And it would be nice if it covered all of it. That, that really would be the goal. So if you haven't taken a look at what's available in the Patreon tiers, go to Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Whistlekick and check it out. $2, $5 a month goes a long way. Other ways you can help us out, buy something at the store, share this episode, buy a book, leave a review, reach out to have me teach a seminar or reach out to get your school on the list or honestly right now the waiting list for consulting offerings. You wanna make more money, bring in more students. I'll bring the same sort of integrity and team-driven approach that we do for everything to your school. No, no tricks and hacks here. This is just solid business practices with lots of integrity. If you want to reach out to us, Andrew at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com, Jeremy at WhistlekickDotcom. Our social media is at Whistlekick. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, smile, and have a great day. Have a great day.